Hello everyone, uh, this is Peter and Tim and you're at the third episode of the OC Show Season 2. So, um, first of all, I have to mention that there will be a Q&A of this episode later next week, I think. But when, when is it exactly? Um, so, you know, last week we changed it to Monday because Truthman was keen, right? But now we are back on track. So next Sunday, it's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time uh, in the U.S., uh, that would be around 3 a.m. for the guys in Europe and about 6.30 p.m. for the guys on the Pacific time zone. Okay. So we'll be on Twitch on the Overclocking TV channel and we'll be going through the topics we, we are going to talk about today and you guys can ask questions. I, I have to be honest and I feel slightly embarrassed uh, admitting this but I didn't watch it last time. So can you tell me what, what went <laughs> on during the Q&A maybe? Well, you missed out because last time we had a lot of fun. We, um, we had two guests. We had... Um, we had um, the administrator from Overclockers, uh, overclockers.at uh, talking, uh, so Matthias Tronic, he was talking about the Turrican challenge and uh, so how he knew uh, Carl and all that. And we also had uh, Dennis Garcia from Hardware Asylum who was giving his inputs on all the competitions and all the things happening at uh, so you can still watch this video uh, again online or sure yeah we uh, upload all those videos uh, as replays on our youtube channel so if you guys missed out you should go there don't check on facebook because there's a 40 minutes limit and this show is about an hour long or so it's a lot longer than this episode oh sure. yeah yeah but lots of fun <laughs> so let's go <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so a lot of things change and actually since last time if you remember right we were mentioning that dan cup uh, used to be number one that was what we were celebrating last time and by the time I edited the video if you have been cleverly looking at the video you could see that Dan Cup was not number one anymore when I did the screen grabs and of course uh, now he's number one again for real so what 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 happened there? well for real and maybe not for real so something very very awkward happened at uh, HW1 um, mm -hmm. Last week, we launched the final version of the new competition points at OC Esports. Yep. And the new competition points rate competitions differently than uh, than we did previously at HW Pop. Mm -hmm. So you would get, for example, 50 points for winning an online competition and 250 points for winning a live, uh, live competition. Such as MOA or HOT. Yeah, for, yeah. Yeah, for example, um, the, the winner of uh, Hybrex OC TakeOver 2015 mm -hmm. in, in January, uh, Extreme Addict yep. already has 250 points. So the ranking at OC Esports is seasonal based, which right. means that only the competitions for 2015 will be counting towards this this season. Oh, yeah. Now we increased the points, uh, or cre increased the competition points to see the effect on OC Esports, but we didn't anticipate that this would also have an effect on HW Pop. Mm -hmm. um, in case you don't know, the competition points at HW used to be just the sum of all the competitions you uh, you competed in. So this would not be something that would uh, um, uh, decrease over time. And it would not have a weight depending the type of competition. No, it would just be the sum of all points. So when we when we pushed this this version to OC Esports, we also affected the HW World Leagues, and all of a sudden, I think APAC had over four thousand points, which is the, all the score, all the all the competition points accumulated over time. Right. So evidently, the, the the weight of the competition points in the HW World League was. Way too high. So that's why a lot of changes, and some guy had a lot of points, and others just dropped down yes. 30 places. So we weren't exactly sure what we had to do, but one thing was for sure that the, the competition points, as they were pushed in their in their current form, mm -hmm. didn't really work. So we removed the competition points, which makes that Dan Cop is at number one right now because his okay. his the sum of his 15 best global points and 20 best hardware points. Yeah. is high that well the highest of everyone in the league right so we also had a poll on the fo on the forum uh, or on the front page um, to figure out what we should do yeah. and 52 percent of the of the overclockers said that they do want to have competition points integrated in the age dollar lot leagues so moving forward what we have to do is figure out um, a, a clever way to integrate the competition points once again to make it simple to to make it um, uh, consistent with the league points that we already yeah. have and to make it fair for everyone okay. so it will be I'm not sure yet what we're going to do exactly um, we're, we're trying out different different formulas if you look at the global points and the hardware points um, 
it's a very dynamic league. You can always lose those points. Yeah, depending if someone makes a better score than yours. Yeah. And, and the competition points previously were static. You could never lose the competition points because yeah. once you ranked in a competition, yeah, competition forever, ends, right? it, yeah. you, those points don't change. So the HWL, HWL leagues are uh, that kind of a dynamic league and we have to make sure that the competition points are as dynamic as well. True. Plus before uh, only extreme and elites were getting points, right? Yes. So now I suppose the new system should also take into account that novices and rookies might also get part some part of those points. Well, we have the we have the rookie rumbles um, and you know we have all these different competitions where the enthusiasts, the novices, and the and the and the, and the rookies can participate. Like in. country cup, team cup. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And we have to keep in mind that these competition points were introduced at each other but before we established a rookie and the novice yeah. category. So it's so, a historic thing that was part of the algorithm, yeah. right? So our focus was so much on the OC Esports implementation that we kind of lost track of what yeah. the effect would be on each other bot, which is a massive oversight, but sometimes these kind yeah. of problems occur. Okay. So right now, the points are not in that ranking anymore. No, competition for the moment, points right? are for the moment excluded from the HW leagues. Okay. Uh, but you can find all of them in the OC Esports. Uh, right, so on the OC Esports size, you have the official 2015 or 2014 rankings. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. So talking about OC Esports, um, last week we mentioned it a little bit, but we should probably talk a little bit more about that today, which is the Challenger Series. And it's part of the the road to pro uh, competition scheme, I would say, from OC Esports, right? Yeah. So um, at OC Esports, um, we kind of we kind of pull out the whole competition aspect, the, comp mm -hmm. the overclocking competitions from HW Bottom, build a new platform around it, OC Esports. Yep. And our um, our main feature on that website is the road to pro. The road to pro is a competition structure where at the very top you have the pro OC. And then yes. below that, you have seven challenger divisions, each with their own hardware and benchmark requirements. Okay. So we give we give the space to any type of overclocker, whether you have the, the Core i7 and the most high-end GPU, mm -hmm. or you have a, only an AMD APU, or you have a just a mobile device, or you want to focus on legacy. We give everyone their own category to sort of compete in. Okay, so when you're in a category, you're not facing anyone else from the other categories. You're not into... Yeah. A, you're not fighting for the same points and you can be champion of your own category. Yeah, so the, the winner of, let's say, the Division 3, which is a, with, a, with a Pentium K mm -hmm. CPU, the winner of, the, of, the, of that division will be using the same hardware like anyone else in that division. Yeah. So you're not going to get trumped by someone who just has more, um, you know, high, more, more higher end system. Okay, and how many, how many stages do you have for each? Each uh, each work? challenger uh, each challenger series has three rounds, mm -hmm. and each round has five stages. Okay, so the three rounds align with what we used to have for Pro C, right? Yeah. It's the same kind of quarterly based competition. Yeah. So we started in uh, on February first, and the competition ends on March thirty first. Okay, and then you have another one, then another one, then it stops because then you have all the country cup things going yeah. on. Okay. Yeah, you can find everything on the schedule. We yeah, on the schedule, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, everything is there. Okay, so well, that's going to be interesting. How is the participation so far? So far, I'm yeah pretty surprised by how much people are currently competing. Yeah. I think I just checked it before we made this recording. There is a 502 overclockers currently participating in in all sorts of competitions, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty exciting. Like 500 okay. is it's a very nice number. Oh, well, that's great. Something else very exciting is the World Tour coming up in three weeks at LAN ETS Canada. And I believe you have some updates on well, that. Well, we have some pretty cool updates because we actually have some sponsors and partners that joined the, the, the tour. And uh, I'm on which the probably most interesting part, which is Microbyte. It's a local uh, store uh, retail shops in, uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're in the business of selling computer parts and also buildings, uh, building machines for people, right? And um, so they are, they are joining us as an official partner and what they are going to do is provide the systems for the World Series from, um, for amateurs. So that's the, the gamers from the LAN ETS as well as the visitors that are amateurs so have no experience of overclocking or are novices or rookies that want to participate in there and learn how to OC. We give them a small workshop and then they can have, have hands on on those machines and compete for some prizes and prizes which are again provided by microbytes. Yeah, I, I don't think we have announced the prizes yet, but we know what they are, and you should stay tuned for. It's the pretty prizes. cool. Like yeah. it's something like you can pretty much build up 
a whole system for the winner. Yes. And uh, there's also going to be a Dimatech, so uh, okay. which is a European company, uh, so Italian guys that are doing bench tables. And there's nothing better, I think, for OC events to have those guys on board. So they're going to provide the bench tables for that event. They're also providing bench tables actually for the European events and probably also the, the Taiwan one. So thanks Dimatech, thanks Microbytes, it's going to be epic. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, actually, before we finish, we forgot to mention one thing, one new stuff going on because we, we used to have the Rookie Rumble, mm -hmm. but then once you pass Novice, you've got well, let's to so play let's 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 <laughs> contextualize this a little bit. We have the rookie and the novice category. If yeah. you, when you enter or when you register at HWBot, you become an automatically a rookie. Sure. After three months, your rookie status is over. You've learned enough, and you move on to the no the novice phase, right? So when we establish these new leagues for the rookies, we we build the rookie rumble competition, which mm -hmm. is actually a very successful competition series with yeah. about 300 rookies every month competing in this Rookie Rumble. The problem is though, once you leave this rookie phase and you move on to the novice, there wasn't really anything going on specifically True, for... Yeah. Besides the regular competition, yeah, but then again... Besides the regular competitions and of course besides the leagues. Yeah. So we've made a new type of competition called Novice Nimble, which <laughs> is sort of between the Rookie Rumble and the Country Cup. You compete in your team, Right. Um, you need a minimum of three scores per um, per stage, and each of the novice nimbles have uh, have five stages. Next to the ones that we know from the rookie rumble already, we also included um, two 3D benchmarks. So one yeah. for AMD graphics cards and one for Nvidia graphics cards. Um, so for the novice nimble, it's it's not so much anymore about getting accustomed to the the, comp the way competitions work. It's more of um, you know figure out. Your team, team right? yeah. Find some um, motivated novice overclockers in your team and yeah. try to become the best team at in this novice number. So for the novice number, it's not like you you register and you make your own team, right? It's no. uh, you join existing teams at HJBot. Well, you can create a completely new one if you wish, but it's based on the HJBot teams, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can you can either join an existing team and or you can make your own mm -hmm. team. But the most important part is that this competition is limited only to novice users. Yeah. So you cannot just create an account and take part in this competition. You have to go through the rookie stage first. Okay. Yeah. Once in a while, we publish an article on the HJBot front page um, indicating which teams have the, the most, most novices, rookies, uh, yeah. the most sorry, the yeah. most rookies on board. So it might be interesting to keep an eye on that and then join these teams as. You know, you yeah. want to get a feel of overclocking together with other rookies. Yeah, because that, that's probably the yeah, where you can find the most novices right now. That's well, in three months for sure, yes. <laughs> it's just a matter of yeah. time. So Rookie Rumbles, there's uh, usually prizes for that are lucky draws. There's some prizes so far for Novice Nimble. No, yeah, we're just trying out how the competition works. And yep. once we get the, 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 the right um, configuration nailed down, then we can look for prizes. Okay. So if people have some feedback, they can discuss oh, yeah. in the competition discussion and... Just share your thoughts. Definitely. All right, cool. Well, I think that's that's about it for today. Uh, I think we went through all the topics we, we had discussed. Don't forget to join us uh, for the live Q&A next Sunday evening in the US or Monday morning here in Taipei. I'll try to join as well this time. Well, sure, yeah. You're <laughs> just sitting next to me, you know. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. So yeah. So that's it. And uh, guys, if uh, make sure to share this episode and give us a thumbs up if you like it. Share it also on Facebook, it's over there. Make sure you like the OC Show Facebook page and um, see you next time. Thanks. All right, bye.